Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a Tip Tuesday. I am here with a Elva wig by Noriko. I just recently reviewed Elva and I promised you a Tip Tuesday showing you how to deal with a wig that has visible permatease and bangs that are just a little bit too long, both of which Elva has. So if you'd like to see how I'm going to deal with this and maybe learn a few techniques that will help you if you ever have this issue, then stick around for the rest of this video. All right, so I threw Elva on so that we can start talking about her and I can share with you some of the things that I'm seeing. And I will tell you that she already looks a lot better even though I have not done anything to her yet because I've put her on my head a few times. I've been playing with her. I played with her in the review. And all of that is going to help a wig start to loosen up. Um, visible permatease will start to disappear as it flattens back into the cap. And as, you know, as I've played with her and I've fluffed her up a little bit as those fibers are lifted. So some of that is just natural over time. But when I first got Elva out of the box, the visible permatease was very significant. And so I, again, it's, it's diminished a little bit over time. But what I'm talking about is right up in here, all of this, there's like kind of fuzzy fibers in there. Hopefully it's coming across on the video. It can be hard because when you don't have a rooted wig, it kind of blends in. But yet in person, it looks very obvious. And I have shared in the past that one of the ways you can combat visible permatease is to get a rooted wig. Having a darker rooting up here really does help disguise that. Another would be getting a fairly curly wig or wavy wig because when you've got curls and waves, just in general, those tend to be lifted up off the cap. And so then they are higher than the permatease. And then you can't sometimes see that permatease. With the straighter wigs, I have found just in my own personal experience, if it's a basic cap wig and is uh, has got a fair amount of permatease, which most of them do, then you will see that permatease a little bit more prominently than you will with a curly and a wavy wig. So that's another technique if you're purchasing um, basic cap wigs is just kind of think about the style as well. So in this video, I'm going to be using a couple of tools to help me demonstrate what you can do to help if the bangs are just a little bit too long, if they're a little too flat, and then if you've got visible permatease. And the star of this video is going to be my hot airbrush. I have shown you how to use this in previous videos. The one I have is a Hot Tools. Um, but, I mean, you can purchase any hot airbrush. The keys that you're looking for, that um, it's an airbrush, not a curling iron brush. So you don't want it to have metal in here and you don't want it to heat up. And it is preferable to have it be all plastic. I have just recently purchased a hot airbrush that has a metal in here. I am going to be testing that out on some wigs. And if I find that that works well, uh, then I'll bring you guys a tip Tuesday to share that. Because I think as, as important as, as it is that I share reviews and color spotlights and styling tips, I think showing tools and those kinds of things are also really helpful. So more to come on that as I test it out. And I also have with me just some basic scissors. I've got my thinning shears, which are the, the scissors with the little tines or the teeth. I've got straight scissors and I have my, which I didn't pull out yet, but it's just handy right here, my razor cone, which I find to be a uh, of all these tools, I think a razor comb is an absolute must have for every single wig wearer. It's, it's easy to use, it will help you with certain minor trims, and it is not expensive. So I always link these in. I always have my Amazon store linked in the description if you scroll down into the section where how I think it's titled How You Can Support Me, and I will have my Amazon store linked there, but if I think of it when I'm posting this video, I can pull out a few of these links out of Amazon just so that you have them handy too. Again, no need to purchase from the links. They're just examples for you. You can certainly purchase anywhere that you can find a similar products that are good price. All right, so let's get moving here. Now, one of the things I like to do, okay, it's on the counter, is I like to use a little bit of water on my wigs um, when I'm using a hot airbrush on a synthetic wig. So this is a regular synthetic. It does not have heat-friendly fibers. 
you can use low heat on wigs that are not heat friendly. You just want to be cautious. Everything I teach you in these Tip Tuesdays, I ask you to research, to you do with caution, you know, at your own risk. I am not... Um, I'm not a professional hairstylist. I'm not a licensed hairstylist. I am a everyday wig wearer who's done some of these things and figured them out on my own and I'm bringing some ideas to you. So please keep that in mind and if you were to try something with a wig and ruin your wig, there are so many variables that can, can factor in. Please don't come after me for it. I'm just trying to share with you what I've done. So one of the first things I'm going to do before I even start to deal with trimming these bangs, which are just too long for me, um, is I'm going to try to get some lift here because with the hot air brush, if I get some lift, I will be hiding that permatease. And so, and in the process of that, the bangs may look a little shorter if I get a little lift out of them. So I don't want to cut them before I've managed that part of it. And personally for me, I would like just a little bit more lift here. Uh, even though it has permatease, the permatease isn't heavy. And so I'm not going to get a sustained lift just by uh, getting in there and digging into that permatease. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spray bottle and I'm just going to gently and lightly spray. You don't want to take too much water because then it's going to take a long time for the hot airbrush to do its job. But a little bit of water helps. I think it protects the fibers a little bit, creates a little bit more of a steam environment, which is uh, helpful in getting to redirect these fibers. So now straightening out this cord here. So now I'm going to take my hot airbrush and I'm going to use it on high. This one doesn't have a temperature control. It just has a low and high. It is not a high heat. This does not give off a ton of heat, which is why it's safe to use on synthetic wigs. When I've been using this in the past, I can show you that I can hold my hand over this as I've got the fibers and I don't burn my hand. That tells me this is safe heat. So let's just kind of watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to turn it on. And now I'm just going to kind of get in here and I'm going to pick up some of the fibers right here at the, at the permatease. So I'm going to start probably first of all, I'm just kind of going side to side because what I want to do is I want to lift the fibers up. Now, depending on which way you want to part it, because, you know, with the basic cap, you can part it wherever you want. Once I start getting these warm and malleable, then I'm going to want to part it from this way to this way. So I'm going to want to do it the opposite way more to begin with. Because then when I flip it over, it's going to have some lift. So it's still damp, so I'm kind of working on just kind of drying it with this heat. And you can see, this is not getting hot. I can hold my hand on here indefinitely, and it's not going to burn my hand. Maybe even going back a little bit, and then picking it up. do and I'll probably show in a future tip Tuesday is if you're starting to get frizzy ends a hot airbrush can really help smooth those ends back out as well so now I'm just sort of holding it up a little bit I want to help it to cool with that lift so the key let me just hold it kind of up like this the key to redirecting synthetic fibers, whether that's getting them a little bit straighter, directing maybe a crimping that's happening, is you want to let them cool in the new direction before you kind of set them there. The cooling process is what actually resets that new style. So I'm just holding it up a little. If you have a mannequin head, this might be easier to do on a mannequin head. I just sometimes too lazy to pull my mannequin head out and it can be helpful to when you're doing something like this to do it on your head because then you can see how it's laying and where it's going all right and usually when you're using low heat like this it is going to take a little bit 
of time, maybe multiple sessions doing this to get it to work. But already you can see there's some lift here. And that was just from kind of the first pass. And as I start to get more lift, you're not gonna be able to see that permatease as well because the fibers will be higher than the permatease. And as I do this, I'm also starting to learn how maybe I want to direct these bangs before I were to take any type of scissors to them because that's permanent. This is, it's permanent, but it's not drastic because once you redirect uh, synthetic fibers, they stay there, um, but it's not drastically permanent like cutting it. So I'm holding it up again. I want to just get a little bit of lift out of there. Since it doesn't have a lace front, I definitely need these bangs to stay forward. So now I'm seeing right there that permatease kind of right in the center. So now let me try to, before I turn it on, I'm just trying to see what I'm doing here and get a little bit more lift right here in the center. have a hair dryer with a cool shot on it you could take that and once you're done with this part you could hit it with the cool on the hair dryer if you're good with tools you could even use a hair dryer and a round brush to do this as opposed to the hot air brush and then that would be easier to use that um, cool shot I'm just not super talented when it comes to stuff like this so keep that in mind, especially if your curling iron, if your hair dryer has a kind of a low heat setting. So now can you see there's a lot more lift in the front here than there was before. Now the question is, is it going to stay? That I can't, you know, that's going to take some time to determine. It may take multiple sessions to finally get it to stay because we're not using a ton of heat. But now look at it. First of all, these bangs, like I said, they're going to maybe shorten up a little bit as I get lift. And that's what's happening here. I'm going to have a lot less to cut because now they're starting to get shorter. And I've gotten this lift here. So that visible permatease is much lessened. How cute is that? Now, you might like the flatter look. You might not want so much lift here. So in that case, um, you can have a couple of options. You can, one of the things that you can sometimes do is you can take hair fibers. I have an example here, this Boost and Blend hair fibers. And you can put some hair fibers on the visible permatease and see if that will help hide it. I have done that with mixed results, depending on the color of the wig, the color of the hair fibers, and um, how bad the visible permatease is, it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. So if you have hair fibers on hand, maybe you used to use them to blend your own hair with toppers or just to hide your scalp when you were losing your hair, like I did for 20 years, then it's worth a shot because they come out, they're not permanent, they'll wash out. Um, they're a little messy. I mean, I really don't like using hair fibers very often. They kind of get all over. They're such a fine fiber. And I don't know if I've got PTSD from using it for 20 years or what, but I just really am done with fibers. But I do want to share with you that they can be a good tool um, to helping to disguise. And you can just shake a little bit on, on that area. Um, another thing you could do is you could start to add a little rooting with a furniture marker and sometimes just doing that will draw the eye into that a little bit different, reflect the light a little bit different and hide that permatease. But for now, I am just thinking this is working perfectly. 
what I have done so far truly is I, and it's, it's sometimes hard to see in these videos. I'm doing the best I can to show you, but I'm going to tell you what I see. And when I look in the mirror, I, and I'm going to get up a little closer here, unless I get way in there, like super close, if I'm just at a natural standing distance from someone, I can't see that permatees at all anymore. This is lifted just enough for that. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Now, if I wanted more kind of volume over here, more rounded, more lift, I could do the same thing I did here with this hot air brush. If I wanted maybe just a little bit more curved down at the bottom, again, I could do the same thing, spray it with a little bit of water and then use my hot air brush and then just always make sure the key is whatever you do with it, you're going to want to let it cool as much as possible in that position. That's why I'd said if you've got a hair dryer and a round brush and a hair dryer with a cool shot, that might even be better uh, because then you can cool it a lot faster. So now the only thing left for me to do is a little bit of trimming of these bangs where they're just too long and they're in my eyes. Now, if it's a minimal amount of trimming that you have to do, I highly recommend you get one of these razor combs. They are so full, I mean, they're foolproof to the point where they're, I think they're better than a scissors. So you just take it and you just kind of comb it down. It's very easy. The blades on these get dull very fast with these synthetic fibers. They're the plasticness of the fibers, dull blades. They dull hair cutting scissors blades. So if you find after a few times of using this that you're, you're having to do a lot of sawing to get the hair to cut, change the blade. The one that I will link comes with 10 blades. They're very easy to change. They just slide right out like that. And just that's when I when I know I need to change it when I'm when it doesn't basically go through like butter. I just recently changed it. So if I have to do a ton of sawing, I need to change my blade. The alternate option would be to use a scissors. But what I find for me personally, because I'm not super experienced, is these can be really hard for me to use. I get more of a blunt cut than I like, and I'm not good at point cutting. So if you've watched any videos of cutting bangs or cutting hair, they'll talk about doing point cutting where you kind of cut up into the hair, not like this. I am very clumsy with that and it inevitably doesn't seem to work very well for me. So I, I will sometimes use a straight scissors, but I prefer, much prefer the razor. And then a thinning shears could be used if you're looking to maybe thin out the bangs. Let's say you just don't like the amount of bangs. You can take, let me make sure I have the thinning shears. If you're going to be doing things, please put your straight scissors away unless you're using them. I have done this many times before where I had all of my tools on the counter and I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I decide, oh, I just want to thin this. And then I grabbed the straight scissors and I did a big chunk out of it. So be careful. <laughs> it's too easy to do, but let me just show you. So if I wanted to thin this because I, it's too heavy of a bang, then I can just take this and I can just cut through and then that, that doesn't do a blunt cut. It just, uh, it does like an uneven, every few hairs gets cut and it thins those bangs a little bit. That is also easy for the new person to do. And it's, it's, um, less, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's harder to mess up, <laughs> um, because it's so forgiving. So that's, that's the tip Tuesday for you guys. Another kind of encouragement to play with your wigs, some ideas of what you can do if you're dealing with bangs that are just slightly too long. These are awesome. If you're dealing with visible permatees and you do want maybe a little more lift, you don't mind that. And again, you can just take this into the sides to get more curve, um, into the other parts of it to get more lift. And, um, Hopefully that is something that is useful to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Please let me know, was this helpful to you? Did you learn something today? Did I tell you something, teach you something that you never knew before? I know I have a lot of people on here who are experienced wig wearers and a lot of people who are new. And I love hearing that I've done something 
useful, but I've also taught a new skill. That makes me so happy. So please let me know in the comments below. If you have a need for a Tip Tuesday, please let me know. I keep a list and I try to get through the, the requests as I can and I, I do things as I think of them as well. And so this one just was presented itself to me as I saw this wig to, that I could review. So there you go, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it appreciate you all so much. It's late. I'm tripping over my words. And if you want to know more about Elva, I do have a review of Elva out there. I'll link it in the description and you can go watch that. If you have Elva, share what you think of her. Do you like her? Don't you like her? Pros, cons, help a wig sister out if they're, uh, you know, on the hunt for a great wig. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll talk to you soon.